Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. My name is Pastor Jim. Greetings to all of you who are with us today uh, in person and live stream, all you live streamers, all you who will be watching later today and this week. Greetings to you. Uh, today is July 18th. Uh, we're almost to the end of July. And uh, so a few announcements. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, it's not really an announcement, but um, how do we know each other is kind of the question. Uh, I've been reflecting on how do we know who's who. Uh, me as a new person, now uh, August 5th will be my third year. And the first seven months of my being here at uh, First Lutheran, I was just trying to get faces and this place would be pretty filled and, and you'd leave and then seven months we shut down. And so I'm trying to figure out who's new and who's, who's returning uh, as a member. And I bet that's the same for you. Do you know each other? And do we know if we have a visitor or a guest in the house? So it is my uh, pledge to uh, m my ministry, myself, that I would get to know you, use your directory, and seek out someone. Maybe you haven't seen them for a while. Maybe they're new. Maybe they're visiting and traumatized by our routine and our systems. And we don't even know our systems and our routine, Then they're always changing. So I just, we should all be aware of that. And so that is how I am greeting you today. Uh, friends and family and welcome. Couple announcements. Uh, script will be uh, be well. It'll be uh, on sale uh, between the services at the table. And uh, Bob Jeanette, our parish nurse, will be back August twenty second. So that's uh, he is coming. What would that be? The third, the second Sunday, third Sunday of the month. He'll be here. So just kind of watch your announcements. I know you could read all the announcements up above on the screen um, and many birthdays so happy birthday to all of you there's many of you so god's blessings to you on birthdays and that but um, i'm going to be away for a couple weeks so give the church a call if you need some help i put some pl things in place for my being gone and i'm going to the mountains of colorado so i will have very little to no phone coverage so i say that in advance um, and I'll be back beginning of August. Having said that, it's a good, good time to uh, stand and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Stand only as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Confession and forgiveness drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Take a moment for your own personal reflection, search your heart and soul as we offer our sins up to God. I always like to face the cross. Take a moment, and then together we'll confess. God, our, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We us our ways when they differ for the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. Take offense of our teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life. Feed us. Amen. Beloved people of God in Christ Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the work, the work of miracles, there is always enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn for you who are at home the church of one foundation, the church of one foundation.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the, of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This reading is from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. I have you stand only as you're able for the gospel lesson. When Jesus sent his disciples out to teach and heal their ministry among the many, their work is motivated by Christ's desire to be among those in need. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, a, a, they, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they had heard he was and wherever he was. And wherever he went in villages and cities and farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who, all who touched it were healed. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the coming and living Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. So to kind of keep up with Jesus in the narratives uh, this, this year, 
We're in the Gospel of Mark, and if we remember, Jesus has been teaching, been teaching parables about sowing seeds, growing seeds, faith of a mustard seed. We, we, we saw the, and heard the story of Jesus calming the storm or the sea, the winds with those disciples in the boat. Uh, Jesus restored life to, to Jairus' daughter. Uh, a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 14 years were, was healed by simply reaching and pressing through the crowd and touching his cloak. And Jesus was rejected in his own hometown when he went home. And then uh, we heard about John the Baptist, how his head was, uh, was removed and served on a platter. And that is just the, the last um, event that happened that, that John, when Jesus heard that John, about John's death, Jesus again went out into the countryside to heal, to teach, and to pray, and to cure. And now the disciples and Jesus, they get together and they're telling him about their events, about the things they're doing, the things they're teaching. And Jesus said, come, let's go to a place of rest. And we know in this story there's a lot of movement. There's people rushing here and rushing there. They're taking the sick on mats and they're going to marketplaces or wherever Jesus might be, begging that he might heal them uh, or the sick or even if they could just touch the fringe of his robe, his cloak, that they might be cured. We always think about in the gospel lesson, these readings, of what, what is the purpose? These are written for us to read. They are not just historical events. What does it mean for the contemporary world, for you and I in God's house, the Church of One Foundation? What are the similarities and differences? Well, one is there's a lot of running around in our life, right? We are going everywhere. I've been you know, thinking about this this morning. Of course, with the pandemic, we were probably running a little bit less and forced to stay home, which we're used to running around and, and taking our kids here and there and going as, as adults. We go to our classes and yoga and exercise and therapy, and we go to all these different places. And that's why the fast food industry is so popular, right? Because we are always on the move. And then, of course, you know, when you think about, well, what's, what's similar and what's different is that during the pandemic, we were forced to stay home. And if you remember what happened with us during the pandemic, you know, we were, uh, there was, we, we, we kind of drained the resources of mental health so there were more problems with mental health by us staying home and divorce attorneys were in greater demand so so we're kind of the people in some ways better running around um, we might think we're healthier and more more um, vibrant and more productive so we're kind of at a new place in life but let's go back to the the narrative a lot of running around and what's different about those people then than now? We're beginning to get back and we're getting into the running around again and we're moving here and we're moving there and we're traveling and fast food restaurants are probably doing better than those sit down mom and dad pop sort of restaurants. But I, one of the things that's different is there was no line at the door of the church. People are not rushing to get to the church before the pastor or, or the organist. People aren't rushing to, to get to Jesus. We're not all running out and following him and trying to figure out where the religious people or even the churches are. We're not doing that. We're slow to do that. But we have so many other things to run to. We have, again, our mental health uh, specialists. We have our doctors, we have our nurse practitioners, and we have our self-help videos now, YouTube. We can find anything that will fix us or help us or something that we can cling to even if we could only reach and touch it, we might be cured. But these people, they didn't have 
all of the things that we have, they were probably pretty poor. No resources, but they had faith in Jesus. And that's why they were running here and running there, hauling the sick on mats and trying to convince Jesus that maybe there was some priority, like if you could spare the time and heal my daughter, or if you could just touch my wife or my brother, if I could just touch you or even your clothing. Kind of a real different two groups of people, right? But we're also much more like formal. We want to be like organized and formal. We're not the type of people who would just sort of run the church and if I could just touch the altar or drink some of the communion wine or something, God might save me if I could just serve a little bit more. We're much more organized and um, cultivated and we come and sit and we want to be, you know, proper. These people were not proper at all. They were just all over the place. They they, you know, they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were lost. And another thing that we could look at, which similar is that, that Jesus needed rest and so did his, the disciples. And we need rest. It's not just that our bodies are tired, our muscles are aching from serving, or, you know, Jesus was tired of healing or his calloused hands from touching so many people. But Jesus would spend time with the Father. The rest was really more like prayer rest, kind of realigning the mission in your mind, like what are we doing, why are we doing this? Like am I engaged, am I in line with God's will, the Father? All this running around that maybe Jesus and his disciples, well, that they were doing all this you know, teaching and healing and trying to get away and then still encountering people and then continue to heal and teach. And, but they do need time away to kind of realign themselves and make sure that their mission, their purpose is on cue, on, you know, keyed with God's plan. And that's probably similar with us that, you know, we get so caught up in our mission and our meetings and our committees that do we ever lose focus of why we are a committee and why we're meeting there was this church once that had a beautiful meal program just a beautiful midweek free meal to the community and i mean the idea of it is great right i mean that if you were alone you were a widow or a widower or you were uh you you were short on income and you're not you weren't a cook or you didn't like eating alone or whatever you know so you could come to this church for this meal but the meal for the workers kind of set up a different problem the problem for the workers who are serving would kind of get upset with each other and then they'd get upset with the people who were coming because they didn't eat all the food or they wanted more or they weren't nice and it kind of kills the ministry of that free meal, meal if people get a little off track of what the purpose of this meal is for. So that group of servers and organizers needed to pull back, take a break, check in with God, and remember what the purpose of this meal is. Keep the main thing the main thing. What is the purpose of of this ministry and perhaps that's what the disciples were doing and what Jesus always did he always went off and prayed to the father now you and I might think with Jesus being the son of God he, he always he absolutely instantly knew what God had in store for him but it's not true a lot of times Jesus didn't know exactly how things were going to play it out until it happened and or just shortly before. But he was obedient to the Father. And so were the disciples. And perhaps even all these followers were obedient to Christ because they came to him because they were hungry. They were hurting. And they believed in him. Now, you and I, on the other hand, in this contemporary world, we may not be that obedient because we know we can get help somewhere else. 
And perhaps we're not as hungry. And we're not as thirsty. Because we live in a different world. We're still busy. And we want to serve. We want to be on committees. And sometimes it gives us something to do. And sometimes we lose the main focus of the ministry. If we noticed in this text, it jumped right over Jesus feeding the 5,000. And you're going to hear about that next week and the weeks to come. So this dilemma, all these people show up with no food, no lunch. And Jesus takes a little bit of bread and little fish and multiplies it. One of the things that, that we can learn and glean from this lesson is that God does give. God does bless us. We live in this contemporary world and maybe we've drifted away from God because we, our faith in God isn't as strong as these people of this ancient world. We can find healing in other places and books and videos and, and groups, support groups. But God always gives. When they came to Jesus, he was tired. He gave back. He had compassion for them. When they were hungry and Jesus was tired, he multiplied food to feed them. There was always enough in Christ. Always enough. And God multiplies what he gives us. We all have something. And it's when we begin to share it that God multiplies it. It grows. We do live in a world that we kind of take care of ourselves. And God gives us what we need. But we begin as a church to see when we give a little away, it multiplies and grows. At the end of the day with Jesus, he is always enough for us. He is our all in all. So what do we take away from today? Rest is good. It gives us a chance to go back and talk to God and check in with God and make sure what we're doing is what God wants us to do. And God will allow us to, to prepare for the next step in that measure of ministry or whatever we're up to. It's a way to kind of reconnect with God but also to understand the abundance in Jesus, that to trust in what we have, that he will multiply what we have, that it's okay to be in community and share. I'll end with this. Mother Teresa was asked if she was in prayer, in mass, in prayer, and someone knocked at the door, would she answer it? She said she would because prayer leads to mission. Prayer leads to action. So it is that we get down on our knees, check in with God, and get up on our feet and go and be on our way that we can serve the Lord and his people. Amen. Our hymn of the day. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I heard the voice of Jesus say, stand only as you're able. Jesus say, come on to me and rest. Lay down, O weary one, lay down. As I was so weary, worn, and sad, I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Behold, I freely give the And I drank of that life.
With the whole people of God, the church, let us confess our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended into dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation, responding to each petition with hear our prayer. O oh God, our shepherd, the church calls out for your care. Form bishops and pastors into courageous shepherds who guide the flocks of the baptized. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Lord, in your mercy. The lands and waters call out for renewal. Provide green pastures and still waters for livestock and protect gardens, farms, and ranches from disaster where flood or drought threatens. Save your creation with your loving might. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Lord, in your mercy. Reconcile the nations, O God. Guide the leaders of nations to walk in the pathways of justice. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Lord, in your mercy. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill, especially Kayla, Brenda, John, Tom, Alan, Jean, Richard, Ben, Tina, Justin, Eileen, Andy, Wendy, Sue, Jim, Amy, Joyce, Landon, Bill, Bonnie, Davy, Dale, Tim, Ellen, Oliver, Judy, Betty, Jackie, Mary, Ross, Diane, Ethan, Paul, Karen, Charles, Sam, Dolores, Jason, and Christine. Lord, in your mercy. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died and are now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your forever, your house forever. Lord, in your mercy. 
into your hands, mighty and merciful God. We commend you all for whom we pray, trusting in your gift of life through Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we brought. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with all the angels, the choir of angels, the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name joining in your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread he gave thanks, giving it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, receive an invitation here at First Lutheran. We practice open communion, which means there are no barriers. If you are hungry and thirsty, you want to come to the Lord's table and receive his body and blood, his, his love, his forgiveness, his salvation, come. There'll be uh, two stations again, uh, this side, that side, so you can come up the sides and, uh, and enter, uh, return down the center. Um, we'll... We have for you um, wafers and wine, which is red, and grape juice in the center, which is a light-colored substance, and then gluten-free uh, elements for you as well. The table is set. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I'll have you stand only as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive a blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him, Savior, like a shepherd, leads us. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. <laughs> 